So again, uh, welcome back to today's class. Today's class is about oil tanker calculation. This is only part one. So we'll be discussing about the basics. And then uh, next week when we come back, we'll be going one step, uh, one step further up. All right, so let's go to this oil tanker calculation. Now the target audience for, these, uh, for this particular uh, module are the candidates appearing for BSc nautical science, second mates, and also the phase one competency examination. Now we are going to go more or less uh, competency examination oriented. However, the topic what we're going to be talking in the, the first session is all about the basics. That's the properties of the oil and all that stuff. So it'll be, uh, it'll be useful for all others also, especially the engineers also because uh, they are involved in the, uh, the bunkering operations and then oil being oil, both bunker oil and the cargo oil, both are same. So the calculations, what happens in the bunkering operations are also uh, same as what we do for the cargo calculation. At the conclusion of this module, the participants will be able to understand the effect of temperature on the volume, density, and the mass of oil. This is basically the heart of why we do all these calculations. Uh, the basic terminology is what are used on board with respect to cargo volumes. Then we also talk about various equipments what are used to determine the cargo volume in the tank. We'll talk about the correction factors, that is uh, uh, VCF, the volume correction factor, and the weight reduction factor. We will do some couple of uh, simple examples using the ASTM tables, that is the tables used for oil correction uh, factors and all. And uh, we also do some calculations in cuboidal tanks without any list, without any frame, a simple, simple calculation. During the course of this module, we'll also be doing some basic numericals. So I request all of you to have a pen and a paper, and of course a calculator handy, so that you can, you can carry on with the calculation. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead with this, uh, the, first, uh, the first part of this oil tanker calculations. We look at the effect of temperature on the oil. Now, before we start the module, let us do a simple example. I mean, with this example, the whole uh, fundamentals will be clear as to why we go about doing all these calculations. Let us start this experiment with a simple uh, uh, one liter of oil in a bottle. The mass of that oil is one kg. It is filled in a place, the ambient temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. That means the oil temperature is also 15 degrees Celsius. We keep it in the base in a, as a reference, and then we start off our experiment. We are, we are mainly worried about, we are mainly going to concentrate on the volume part of it. So pay attention to the volume and then uh, uh, answer the questions. Now this is a level when the oil is at 15 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to put a small green line over there just for reference so that we know. So the black line is the base, the green line is the, is the level of the oil at 15 degrees Celsius. Now the question to you is, we are going to go to a place which is colder than 15, that is about 5, uh, 5 degrees Celsius. When we go to that uh, colder, uh, colder places, what will happen to the volume of the oil? In, in simple words, what, what, what we're looking at is, what will happen to the level of the oil in the bottle? Will it increase or will it decrease or will it remain the same? Decreasing. What will happen? Decrease. decrease. Yes, please go ahead. Answer. Decreases. Decrease. Okay. This is common sense. This is what we, uh, this is what we uh, like what we call, observe in day-to-day -day life. That means when we go from a, uh, from 15 degrees Celsius to 5 degrees Celsius, when we, when we reduce the temperature of the oil, the oil contracts, the volume reduces. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a small mark over there, again, a blue line, which signifies the oil is at 5 degrees Celsius. Now, the next experiment, what I'm going to do is we have this 15 degrees over there as a standard. So we are going to increase the temperature of the oil. Now, what would happen to this oil? With respect to 15 degrees Celsius, what will happen to this oil if we are going to take it to a place of temperature 30 degrees Celsius? Will the oil remain at 15 degrees or at 5 degrees Celsius or uh, what would happen? Will increase. Volume, volume, increases, increases, sir. volume will increase with respect to 15 degrees Celsius. So that is correct. That means the volume will increase when we heat up the oil. So now we have three reference points done over there. The first one is for 5 degrees Celsius. That is when we, uh, uh, we get the temperature below the reference point. That is when we, when we pull on the oil, the volume contracts, the oil contracts. And when we come, when we, uh, we heat it up to more than 15 degrees Celsius, the oil expands. Now, this is all known to us. This is something like what, uh, what we know uh, as a day-to-day -day affair. Now, let us also look at the mass part of it. As I said, all, uh, in the initial condition itself, the the mass, the, the weight of the oil is 1 kg. That means at 15 degrees Celsius, the weight is 1 kg. Now, when we move the oil to a colder climate, 
when we take it to 5 degree celsius what happens to the mass what is the change in mass uh, there is there is no change actually Not there is good. no no change in mass no change in mass no change in mass uh, anybody else because there is something something somebody is missing out so anybody increase in mass or decrease in mass anything see after all the the, the oil is going from a is it change in temperature in the oil so how about will it be the same or will it be no uh, less or more remain same remain same remain the same okay very good that means the oil when we take it to colder climates will still remain the same it will still show as uh, as 1 kg now let us look at what happens to the oil again when we take it to a higher temperature it is going to remain the same that means the mass is not going to change whereas the volumes will change now let us look at this particular part and let us let us analyze what is happening over here when we have the standard reference of 15 degree celsius when we take it to a colder uh, colder place let's say 5 degree celsius when we lower the temperature the volume shrinks the volume reduces when we take it to a higher temperature a place with a higher temperature as compared to 15 degree celsius the volume of the oil will expand that means the it will have more volume whereas when we talk about the mass mass always remains the same that means there is no change in mass at all the weight always remains the same that means 1 kg in 15 degree celsius will still show i mean read as 1 1 uh, kg at uh, 5 degree celsius will again show the same as in 30 degree celsius is it clear any any doubts so far what we the basics what we've covered so far no no sir all right yes, great clear so now let us look at the same experiment now that we have seen the change in the volume the mass remains the same let us look at what happens to density in the oil the same experiment the same thing so before we come into density what how do i define density what is density mass per unit volume mass per volume mass per unit volume perfect because short and sweet that's what that's what the meaning of density is so we have the density as mass per unit volume now let us again do one experiment just let's do let's get the hang of what is this uh, what this density what we talking about i've got a ball of cotton cotton wool over here on the left hand side and i've got a ball bearing stainless steel ball bearing on the right hand side now cotton is lighter ball bearing is heavy is it not yeah. yes the yes, the sir. volume being the same both the volumes are same if you see the circular uh, dimension both are almost same but the cotton is lighter and the ball bearing is heavier so if i ask you a simple question which has got higher density cotton or the uh, the steel ball bearing steel ball bearing steel ball bearing that means i've got more mass packed up into unit volume and that is why the ball bearing density is higher whereas the cotton and the cotton uh, the cotton which is same volume but it's very fluffy it's got full of air inside even though they have the same volume the cotton is lesser density and the ball bearing has got higher density is it clear now the unit of density as the definition says it's mass per unit volume now what is mass measured in tons tons i can also measure it in kg so there are there are like either tons or kg that's what the normal common uh, terms used in the normal uh, denominations what is the measurement for uh, volume unit volume so how do i measure unit volume what units would i measure it in meters per meter cube ton per meter cube no ton per meter cube is for density but for the meter cube is a unit volume that means it can be a meter cube or we can also say it in per liter also because again liter is uh, the same as the uh, unit volume I mean, uh, it's a, it's, a, it's a unit of a volume so we can either have mass per unit volume that is uh, mass in tons or unit volume like we can refer it as cubic meters that is ton per cubic meter this is what normally we shippies are all used to tons per cubic meter the same thing can also be referred in kg per liter now if you actually see the units wise the tons we are reducing it by 1000 i am getting it kg cubic meter i am reducing it by 1000 units i am getting 1000 uh, sorry 1 liter that means if i have a if i have a uh, let's say uh, a particular figure if i mention it in kg per liter or mention it in tons per cubic meter both units remain the same i mean the the, the numeral remain the same the units may vary but then whatever let us say if i say 0.8 uh, uh, tons per cubic meter that is also same as 0.8 kg per liter is it clear any doubts there yes sir yeah. okay all right now we have defined the density as mass divided by volume so what we are going to do is keeping the mass on one side 
if i take the volume on the other on the on the left hand side we will have mass is equal to density into volume that is this is the this is the this is a kind of like what you call the calculation what we use for our tanker uh, for finding out the mass so mass that is weight is volume multiplied by density now one thing we have to remember very clearly is over here as we saw in the previous example the volume changes with temperature all right so we have to be very clear when we are referring to this particular equation mass is equal to volume into density both volume and density have to be at the same temperature if i use a volume at a different temperature and density at different temperature then the mass which is calculated is not correct clear so let us look at the effect of density on the oil our density of the oil when the change of temperature happens so this is what a previous example was we have different volumes at different temperatures 5 degrees is the least 15 is the standard and 30 degrees is more than 15 degrees whereas the mass remained the same this has got low at 5 degrees the volume shrinks that means the volume becomes less for the same amount of mass that means the oil density increases for 15 it's a standard reference so we we skip 15 we come to 30 degrees celsius now here the volume of the, or the oil has expanded the volume i mean the oil has as kind of like expanded and but then retaining the same mass the same mass of 1 kg that is why the density reduces clear so let us summarize what we've done with a simple example if i have a given volume of oil the temperature is reduced the volume reduces and the density increases the temperature of the oil is directly proportional to the volume but indirectly proportional to the density the temperature comes down the volume comes down whereas the density increases conversely if i increase the temperature the volume increases because the oil expands and because the oil expands the density reduces now the standard temperature what we use for all our calculation is 15 degrees celsius of course world over there are a lot of other uh, like uh, temperatures uh, but as i said in the beginning this module is mainly for mmd examination the kind of uh, the questions which come in mmd uh, competency examinations or in the ime examinations that is why we are sticking to the the standard references as 15 degrees celsius if you actually on board when you go if you go to like places like us north where they use uh, at different units we may also use something like 60 degrees fahrenheit and all some some uh, some countries in the world also use 20 degrees celsius for their standard reference but as this module is based on uh, the mmd examination we will stick to 15 degrees celsius the mass always remains the same there is no change in the mass at all because we are not changing anything in the mass if the volume increases the density reduces and the, the the volume reduces the density increases so they both compensate each other and that is why the mass always remains the same the unit of density is tons per cubic meter or kg per liter and finally the formula for the mass that is a weight is volume into density again remember the volume and the density both have to be at the same temperature if the volume is at a different temperature and the density is at a different temperature the answer will not be correct so the density and the volume has to be always at the same temperature for this for formula at number 6 step to be used mass is equal to volume into density any doubts any queries in the small example what we did because this forms the basics of your oil calculation if you are if you are if you are comfortable with this particular part that means we can visualize what really happens when we go from a colder climate to a hotter climate or when you take a bunker from let's say uh, in fujaira or in singapore in the afternoon what happens to the uh, to the same oil in the colder climates or maybe in the night time so this is what really is a, is a base the, ba the the basis of uh, the oil tanker calculation any question so far let me see if anything is there in the chat moderator here sir yeah hi good afternoon captain subramanian manan sir yes, uh, mr sandeep had uh, raised that he need to view the previous slide i think he having some doubts in the previous slide okay uh, sandeep can you tell me which slide i'm going back sandeep you there you can you can unmute yourself it's a interactive session please unmute yourself and speak up sir uh, one slide back one slide back i need one to slide back okay this one no sir the next slide the previous slide you mean to say the next slide next slide next, next okay subsequent slide okay after this this one Sir, okay. Place number, yeah, right. Slide number eight, he wants. Slide number eight, okay, all right. 
Okay, the yeah, summary of it. Yeah, summary, yeah, summary yeah. of it. Okay, okay. Let I'll get all of them. Yeah, all right. Okay, sir. Thank you. Great. Good to go. If you understand these basic concepts, all your oil tanker calculations, you can actually visualize what really happens in the oil compartment. So this this forms the basics of uh, uh, the oil calculations, especially as far as the MMD examination is concerned. If you can kind of visualize what really happens inside the oil compartment. in the half the battle is won clear so we go to the next chapter we will be talking about few terminologies what to use because tanker people are a breed apart so we will use some terminology some uh, some kind of like uh, terms what to use to refer to some kind of volumes or some kind of uh, the oil content what is there in the tank so let us let us talk about uh, some things now total observed volume this is called as pov all right now let us let us look at this picture over here we have a picture of a tank which is full of uh, at least like uh, most of it is full of oil the oil is brown in color and now if you see in the bottom there are some there is some water water is like a uh, higher density than the oil so the water always will float and i mean it will go to the bottom the oil will be staying on top and you see these green things are the sediment the sediments are like uh, sludge they are they are they, they come along probably like when we load these crude oils and all may not be prevalent in the product tankers but then it's it's very very common in the crude oil tankers so when we talk about the total observed volume we're talking about the total volume in that tank at that given time at the observed uh, temperature because again the observed comes in that means at the, at the at the given temperature that means at the temperature at which it is outside not the standard temperature the ambient temperature so now what what happens is if i if you try if you find out the total volume of the tank the, the total observed volume includes the volume of the water Includes the sediments, includes the sludge, includes all these impurities which are there in the bottom. Clear. Now this is measured at the observed temperature. When we come to the next one, that is the gross observed volume. The gross observed volume is minus the water and minus the sediments. That means total had in, uh, had the water and the sediments. When we come to the gross observed volume, we exclude the water, and we exclude the water and the bottom sediments. That means Finally, what I have is only the oil. See what happens is when we have this water in the bottom of the tank. Now the charterers are not going to pay for this water. The water is free water. The water is freely available at the sea also. So we are not going to be paying the freight for this water. The bill of lading will not include this free water which is which is lying at the bottom. So this is excluded in all the tanker calculations for freight calculations and also we don't we don't want to calculate uh, this this water content. That's the reason for changing over from total observed volume (TOV). to gross observed volume that is gov that is only the oil which is there in the, in the tank we also have one more thing called standard uh, gross standard volume that means what we do is from one, the next step from this gross observed volume what we do is we go one more step further and then we we define that as this gross observed volume as an observed temperature that means at the, at the prevailing ambient temperature whereas when we talk about the gross standard volume we come to a standard temperature as 15 degrees celsius You saw in the previous example also the temp the volume keeps on uh, fluctuating if we change the temperature. So for us to go ahead with the calculations, we have to have a standard volume at a particular standard temperature. And standard temperature, what we use world over for the tanker calculations is 15 degrees Celsius. So gross standard volume talks about uh, the volume at 15 degrees Celsius. Here, the next part is about the content of the oil inside the tank. Now, when we are talking about discharging operation. discharging is almost finished there are still there is still some amount of oil in the tank which we cannot discharge these are like either unpumpables because you can't discharge that the pump can't reach those pockets of oil which is there in the tank this is when i talk about rob that's remaining on board we're talking about all the unpumpables which is there inside the tank after the completion of the discharge activity this is very important you cannot discharge this with a fixed pumping arrangements on board if you put a portable system that's a different story but the, the fixed pumping system with the fixed piping system of the tanker you cannot discharge them these are called remaining on board this is all, always taken up calculated towards the end of discharging activity in the discharge port can anybody tell me why do we need to calculate for this rob why should uh, the charterers or why should the agent be interested in finding out how much of oil is left in the back of the tank the percentage can be calculated for the next calculation purpose so we have okay so, uh, uh, we will not talk about we have right now we are just about the basics only why would this be required 
be calculated for the calculation purposes for uh, calculations can you please elaborate you are partly correct calculations yes but why uh, the amount what we have discharged to get the total uh, volume of the oil oil volume discharge. of the tank See, now the freight is being paid for you to discharge the full oil what will happen if i collect the freight from the charterers think that i have cal- I've, i've carried the oil from place a to place b but i have retained half the oil half the quantity of oil inside the, inside my tank saying that it's unpumpable that means whatever oil is in the at the bottom of the tank what is not discharged the the ship owner is not the carrier is not going to get the freight for this this volume which is here because that's that's a lost lot that's a loss for the charterers for the shipper and that is the reason why we calculate this quantity towards again now the same ship is going to a load port in the load port she arrives with this quantity of oil at the bottom of the tank and now that is what is called on board quantity the quantity is the same you see there is no difference between what is there in the rob and what is there in the in the obq but here the what the only the terminology has changed what we mention here is on board quantity instead of saying remaining on board after completion of discharge what we say is that on board quantity before we started the loading so when we talk about obq we talking about something which is already in the tank so and this is from the previous discharge operations and it is declared in the load port prior to the start of loading activity so before we start before we go for loading activity there's something called tank inspection there they find out if any oil is there in the tank if all tanks are all zero that means we say zero obq and if uh, on the completion of the discharging operation if the if the, all the tanks are clean that means there is no uh, content of the oil inside we term it as uh, zero uh, rob clear so these are the various uh, like what we call terminologies what we use and again we are only sticking to the uh, uh, to our examination purpose so we stop at these two these five basically uh, we talked about gov it was uh, we started first about with tov then we talked about uh, uh, the the gross volume and then we talked about this uh, standard volume and then obq and the rob now let us come to the uh, the heart and soul of this oil tank calculation that means what we are going to find out is we are going to find out what is it a volume of the oil in the cargo tank now the condition the the basic condition is that the tank has got no list and no trim that means it's perfectly even keel and perfectly upright in that case what we do is we find out what is the gross amount of volume in the tank and for finding out the volume like i said in the previous example there are some equipments what is used the first one is a sounding tape the same can be used i mean the sounding tape is normally used even for bunkering also so something similar uh, the sounding tape that means what we do is we have a sounding tape it is it is put in a uh, in the sounding uh, pipe and the sounding tape goes all the way down there is something called an oil finding paste which is which is applied on the tape and the oil finding paste like water finding paste it changes color only when it touches the oil nothing happens to it when it touches the water or when it is in the air it only changes it, uh, the color when it is uh, when when it is touching the oil that means when we put the sounding tape inside we come to know the depth of the oil directly mm-hmm. Now that is called a sounding tape. Next is called a lace tape. Now sounding tape, the problem is, and we are going to put the whole tape inside again when we take up the uh, pull up the tape. A lot of oil will come in the uh, all this which is what is sticking onto the tape will come onto the uh, to the roll. So what we find out is we are not interested in finding out what is the depth of the oil. What we'll find out is how much of the empty space is there on top. That empty space is called a lace. So this tape is called a lace tape. it is also known as sonic tape ultrasonic tape because uh, the uh, the fundamentals what is used is the ultrasonic frequency and the conductivity of this oil that means the bob will be uh, will be hung from top as soon as the bob touches the water there is an alarm which comes in because the conductivity changes the conductivity of the air is different and the conductivity of the oil is different so this is what is called as an as an as an alage tape it can also be used for finding out the interface we we saw the previous example where we want to find out how much of water is there in the bottom of the tank so to find out how much of water is in the bottom we can use the same tape and then the tape is called uti alage temperature and interface so it gets the interface also and then it gets the uh, the level also now next one is again uh, this is a fixed system what we have we have something like a radar the signal the radar signals that is electromagnetic signals is sent down the beam of signal goes down it touches the uh, uh, the level of the liquid it's bounced back and then the radar the radar picks it up the difference of time like an echo sounder or like a normal uh, navigation radar the difference of time between the pulse sent out and the pulse received is the is a is the amount of alage so the whatever distance is there we divide it by 2 then we get the amount of alage from the tank top so this system is called radar gauge 
we also have one more very very old system in if you if you sailed on those like 20 plus years old tankers and all you will find this uh, system what is so known as known as float gauge or vesso gauge in this we have a float system it's a spring loaded system where it is the the spring is i mean the there's a float at the uh, at the bottom of this gauge the the float keeps on going down when the float touches the level of the li uh, the liquid it cannot go down any further and and this uh, and this vesso gauge uh, the more, there is a there's a the meter inside which maintains a constant tension in this uh, spring so as soon as it touches i mean it maintains a constant spring we come to know how much when is it uh, uh, when it has touched the surface of the oil and that again gives us the alleged so these are the four equipments what we use on board a ship for finding out the alleges or this are the soundings ultimately what i want is we want to find out what is the depth of the oil so from alleged we subtract the depth of the tank and we can we come to know what is the depth of the oil which is inside so far so good clear yes sir yes sir understood yes sir thank you yeah yes sir now using any of these method ultimately what we want to find out is the depth of the oil in the tank clear and once we know the depth of the oil it's a simple calculation simple volume calculation that is we know the breadth of the tank we know the depth of the oil and we know the length of the tank so volume is basically uh, length into breadth into depth a simple calculation which is which is there now can we find out the oil i mean how much of oil is there in this tank i've got an example over here so please take out a pen and paper and a calculator or some i think i don't think we need a calculator for this question the depth of the oil is 10 meter the length of the tank is uh, 20 meter and the breadth is 15 meter how much of oil is there in this tank and again the tank is upright and even keel that means there is no list there is no trim so the 3000 sir how three, much 3 cubic 3000 meter cube 3000 meter cube somebody said 3 cubics it is 3000 cubics is a simple uh, multiplication of 10 into 20 into 15 that gives us uh, 3000 cubics understood so once we know what is the depth of the oil in an upright tank that is what is the most important thing the finding of the volume is a straightforward multiplication with the length and the breadth of the tank clear yeah. so when we talk about the oil tank calculation again we'll be going on to these basics so this is what we have studied way back in our 5th standard 6th standard or something and this again we have to scrape up our knowledge and then get on this uh, information now this is for examination purpose can somebody tell me how do you obtain the volume of a uh, oil or water in a tank on board a ship do we really calculate i mean uh, the length and breadth of the tank of course we do calculate calculate the depth of the oil or the alleged of the uh, tank but how do you go about calculating the uh, the volume of a tank on board a ship alleged tables yeah. alleged tables very good so we have sounding tables alleged tables which is pre calibrated and it is done in the shipyard by the naval architects they know exactly how much of the what is the shape of the tank and how much of the various obstructions in the tank and then they give us this calibrated table so we have something called as an alleged table or a sounding table which gives us this volume okay uh, any questions so far in this uh, it's a very small topic what we uh, talked about the the volume of the tanks anything in this uh, part no questions in chat sir okay great again this was very basic so let's let's get on to the uh, the fundamentals now all right now we talk about the volume correction factors okay this is when it gets little more interesting so you need attention here we notice in chapter 1 with our example with that bottle of oil for a given amount of volume of oil the temp if the temperature is reduced the volume reduces and the density increases yes or no yes sir Yes, yes, sir. And conversely, the temperature is increased, the volume increases, and the density reduces. We also saw the what is the formula for this mass, or to calculate the weight of the oil in the tank, volume into density, provided the volume and density are the same temperature. If they are not in the same temperature, we have to convert them into same temperature, and that is what is the oil cal oil tank calculation is about. So the life is not so simple. So we'll have volume in the different temperature, density in a different temperature. so what we'll do is we will get everything into a standard temperature and that and then we can apply this particular formula all right so let's get on to this uh, uh, the further steps in the oil tanker calculations like i said we have to ultimately find out what is a mass what is the weight of the oil which is loaded which is used in a loadicator which is used for our uh, bill of ladings and for uh, for fighting for those uh, figures with the uh, bunk barges or whatever it is so we are we ultimately what i need is is a, is a metric tons amount of weight what is there what is loaded 
the weight is actually calculated by volume into density volume i showed you exactly how it is done but again remember both have to be at the same temperature the density is again is given by the uh, uh, by the cargo surveyor so we will look into this density part also as to how it comes about so here the problem is we have a density at a different temperature and the volume at a different temperature so we are going to be correcting the volume to the temperature uh, that is the volume at the observed temperature to 15 degrees celsius once i get the volume at 15 degrees celsius the density is also at 15 degrees celsius now we can easily multiply these two and get the mass is it clear so that's what we are going to do the standard temperature as i said earlier is always 15 degrees celsius the density is always provided in this temperature also we will come in the little uh, the next slide we will come to know more about this density part of it as to why we selected this particular temperature if the volume of the oil which is uh, which is calculated after finding out the allage or the, or the depth of the oil and all is is other than 15 degrees celsius if it is different from 15 the volume of the oil has to be corrected to 15 degrees celsius clear and for this correction what we use is uh, a book called astm table 54 this astm stands for american standards uh, of uh, uh, testing and materials now this is uh, it's a it's like it's, it's a very very uh, oh, it started off almost about 160 years back they have been calibrating all these tables for various calculations so we have astm tables for gas for lube oils for paints and all for all these things they also supply the tables for the the calibration tables for oil cal uh, oil calculation a lot of tables in which specifically we what we use is for table 54 for this correction so we will be referring to those tables in our examples also now coming which are coming up next it is entered using density of the oil at 15 degrees celsius and observed temperature so we will do couple of examples of this and then we will see how it is uh, very simple to calculate this particular part of it so this is an extract of an astm table again remember this is an exam copy on board a ship what we have is astm table uh, like uh, a b c d and all and what the product tankers use is table 54 b what the crude oil tankers use is table 54 a whereas for examination copy it is just table 54 clear so this being a module only exam oriented we will be sticking on to table 54 now there's something called a, a small booklet comes in it's an it's an exam copy is an extract of the astm tables and uh, that is used for the mmd examination clear Clear so far? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. So let us yes. let us take uh, some examples out of this. And the unit what is mentioned inside is kilogram per liter. Kilogram per liter, like I said earlier, is also same as tons per cubic meter. If I multiply the numerator, that is kilograms, into thousand, and the denominator also into thousand, what we get is tons per cubic meter. So whatever unit comes in, they are both uh, interchangeable. The same thing can be used. and uh, again i'm telling you this table 54 what is there uh, what we're going to use for examination it's only for exam purpose and not for on board use for on board we have a separate booklet which is called the abcd and all which is which is a different thing this is an example of an astm table i'm just giving a layout so let us look at how to how to read the values on the left hand side we have observed temperature now what is the what is the purpose of using an astm table 54 it's a volume reduction that means volume i'm going to convert the volume to 15 degrees celsius like i said in the earlier mass the weight is equal to volume into density we already have the density at 15 degrees celsius but the volume is at a ambient temperature it could be 35 it could be 30 it could be 15 it, i mean it could be less than 15 5 10 depending on which place you're loading the oil from so our intention is to before we use a formula we all have to get it to the same temperature so what we find it easier is to convert the observed volume into volume at 15 degrees celsius that's so that's our goal over there so what we have is the observed temperature on the left hand side and the various densities this density is provided to us in the certificate of analysis in the quality certificates so of the oil what is ordered or the bunker barge persons will give us this density of the oil so the density of the oil is always at 15 degrees celsius so on the top what we have is 15 degrees celsius and on the left hand side what we have is the observed temperature clear yeah. This is how it is. That means uh, let us let us take up an example over here. If the density at the uh, at 15 degrees Celsius is 0.795 kg per liter, find the VCF at 5 degrees uh, Celsius. So how do we find out the VCF now using this table? The density is uh, 0.795. That is this column. The observed temperature is 5 degrees Celsius. That is this row. So how do we find out? One zero zero nine two. 
zero zero nine two. So it's very simple. Thank What you. we do is we first go to the uh, five degrees Celsius. We put a scale over here. We take it around on this uh, on the same horizontal, and then we stop at uh, where we reach this temperature density, uh, the density of at fifteen degrees Celsius. From there, we'll start looking down. So wherever these two meet, that uh, the value is one point zero zero nine two. So the volume correction factor is one point zero zero nine two. I request you guys to uh, please note it down somewhere in a piece of paper because we'll be using this VCF for our simple calculations further down in this uh, module. All right. So let's now look at let's let's look at, let's take up another example over here now. Now the first example what I took was less than fifteen. The second example what we are going to take is more than fifteen degrees Celsius. So the observed temperature of the oil is more than fifteen degrees Celsius. So now can somebody tell me what is the VCF? If the observed temperature is thirty-two degrees Celsius and the density is zero point eight zero zero kg per liter or tons per cubic meter, nine eight point nine eight five four nine eight four five nine eight five four or nine eight four five nine eight four five nine eight four five. So again, the procedure is simple. We we uh, we keep the horizontal row thirty-two degrees at uh, the same temperature. The observed temperature and the density is zero point eight zero zero, and where they both meet is nine eight four five. Practically also, and also for example, please use a scale because we should not make a mistake in going up and down, and especially when you uh, when you reach towards uh, the I mean uh, distance far away from the temperature, you may go up and down, especially if it is hidden in the, in the middle somewhere. So this is how it is taken. If the temperature or the uh, the the density is between somewhere and between. Then a simple interpolation has to be carried out. So I'm not going to go into the interpolation part because it is same as your hydrostatic tables interpolation. What we do, so I'm not going to be taking up the interpolation part over here. It is assumed that the interpolation part is is known at the uh, at the level at your at your competence. So the VCF comes down to nine eight four five. That is what is uh, the these two meet. And uh, please note it down also because we we are going to use the same value again in, the, in our next example. Now it's a simple. Now last one is. Uh, sorry, sir, Rita. one doubt. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, there are a few numericals uh, beside to these values actually. Okay, one, I'll one, explain two, it to you in this slide itself. All right. So this is basically used for inter uh, interpolation. Now let us look at this number over here on the top, the topmost row. What is the difference between this number and this number? One point zero one two two and one point zero one two zero. What is the difference between these yeah. two? Two. Two, sir. Okay, let's look at this one. One point zero zero eight three and one point zero zero eight three. Any difference is there? Nil, sir. Zero. Nil. Okay, so that is that's a difference between uh, the two numbers, which we basically use for interpolation. So now, looking at the number, if the if the density is anywhere in between, if the the value is zero, I can blindly put the same number because there is no change across the densities. We need we need to actually do the interpolation only when the number is other than zero. So it's basically for the use of uh, like ease of work. Okay, so the third example, what we are going to do is at fifteen degrees Celsius, the density of the oil is eight six zero, the VCF, of the observed temperature is also fifteen degrees Celsius. What will be the correction factor which is used? One. Why is it one? How can the correction factor be one? That what does it mean? Of course, the temperature is already fifteen degrees. Yeah, standard the temperature. temperature. Yeah, the ambient temperature and the standard temperature are both the same. That means there is no reduction, there is no increase in the volume. The volume is the same. That is why, if, if you see over here, the fifteen degrees, all the numbers are all one. So still, we still go by this practice. So we we take it from fifteen degrees and we come around the density, and then we get the value for one point zero 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 zero. So VCF is one. There is no change in the volume because your observed uh, temperature and the standard temperature are both the same, and that is why there is no change. Okay, now with the same table, let us look at the correlation of the VCF and the temperature. This is very important because sometimes in examination or even on board use also we calculate one factor. So how do I? How do we know that the factor is is like approximately correct or not? Let's look at the factors which are less than fifteen degrees Celsius. Fifteen degrees is out over here, which is one point zero 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 zero. Any factor which is less than fifteen, what are the numbers you see over here? It's all one decimal something, is it not? One point zero zero, one point something something, one point zero one, is it not? Yes, sir. So if the temperature is less than fifteen degrees Celsius, the factor, the uh, the VCF, the volume uh, correction factor, will always be more than one. 
if i have to use it in the common simple uh, simple words see the temperature is is less observed temperature is less let us take at 0 degree celsius if i have a oil at 0 degree celsius now i'm going to heat up the oil to 15 degree celsius because my standard is at 15 degree celsius what happens to the volume of the oil when i heat up the oil from go from 0 to 15 the oil will expand yes or no yes sir yes, yes. Sir. yes. if the oil has to expand we have to multiply by a factor which is more than 1 that is the reason why for a factor of uh, for a temperature which is less than 15 the factor is always always more than 1 clear so even by mistake if you calculate something by mistake because of the heat of the moment or because of that the confusion or that uh, the stress examination stress or on board uh, time pressures for a temperature more than 15 degrees or for a temperature less than 15 degrees if you put 0 point something something less than 1 that means that itself tells you that the factor is wrong okay So always remember, less than fifteen, the factor is always more than one. Why? Because you're going to heat up the oil to reach fifteen degrees. If you heat up the oil, the volume will expand. Clear? We already discussed fifteen degrees Celsius. The factor is always one. Now let's go to the next step. If it's more than one, if, sorry, if it's more than fifteen degrees Celsius, what we're doing is we have we have to shrink the oil. That means we have to condense the oil, and that is why if the temperature is more than fifteen. the factor will always be less than 1 you will see over here the factors are 0.9988 0.9845 uh, whatever be the numbers what comes in so less than 15 factors more than 1 equal to 15 the factor is 1 factor is i mean the temperature is more than 15 the factor is always always less than 1 is it concept clear yes sir okay yes, sir. all right yes, sir. now let's let's do some examples over here now now right now what we are going to do is only converting the uh, the temperatures i mean uh, correcting the uh, the volumes only to the uh, temperature okay so what we have is the first example find the corrected volume at 15 degrees celsius if the density at 15 is 0.795 the same example what we used earlier also so you can take the same uh, factor from there so what we uh, the observed temperature is 5 degrees celsius and here the new concept what is added is a observed volume which is 2500 cubic so what we have to find out is the observed volume at 5 degree celsius is 2500 what would be the volume at 15 degree celsius so how do we go about doing it we have the volume correction factor as 1.0092 if you remember in the previous example what we have already calculated the observed volume is 2500 which is given in the numericals So we multiply these two. That means we are going from the observed volume to standard volume. That is why from uh, from uh, GOV we come to GSV. That is gross standard volume at 15 degrees Celsius. Anywhere this S comes in, it always stands for 15 degrees Celsius. So we multiply these two things, the volume into the uh, correction factor. We get this thing of uh, 2523. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Now take a step yes, back sir. and just see what I've done. the temperature of the observed oil is as is at 5 degree celsius so when i when i convert from 5 degree celsius to 15 degree celsius what happens to the volume of the oil increase. will it shrink increase. increase or decrease increase increase now after the calculation has the volume increased yes yes that means more or less your factor is correct that means from 5 degree celsius if i if i heat up the oil the volume will increase to 15 degree celsius and that is why the volume is more is it clear yes sir now let's take a next example again the example what we uh, uh, did a few minutes back here we have to find out the volume at 15 degree celsius the density at 15 degree celsius is 0.8 uh, kg per liter and the observed temperature is 32 that's what we did uh, just few minutes back and now here the observed volume is 1500 cubic what is the ambient temperature what's the ambient temperature of this oil 32 32 degrees so 32. from 32 we have to take it to 15 that means what are we doing to the oil are we going to expand the oil or, or uh, condense or contract the oil cooling the oil contract. cooling means the contraction that means we are going to be uh, like making it uh, lesser in size and the working out exactly exactly same this vc we have already calculated from an example as uh, 9845 the observed volume is 1500 so multiply these two and you get 1476 and again before we go to the next step just go one step back and just see at 32 degrees the volume is 1500 now when i cool it to 15 degrees celsius the temp the, the temperature comes down that means the volume reduces 
is the volume reducing over here from 1500 to 1476? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. That yes, means sir. the job done. That means your calculation is more or less correct. At any one point of time over here from 32 to 15, if you see the volume is going up, that means you use the wrong factor. Either you use a factor which is totally different or maybe from some other uh, factor that you used it. So at this step itself, you can correct yourself before you proceed down to the more complex calculation. And now here the last example, this is just for uh, like what you call simple uh, sake, both the observed and the standard temperatures are the same. Any change in the observed volume? No, sir. No change. Because no change. the VCF is 1.000, that means there is no change at all. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So now let's look at the density of the oil. I mean, how we go about doing this uh, little bit about the background uh, information, what is what is given over here. The density of the oil is given by the cargo surveyors. Same for bunkering also. When you go for bunkering operations, the bunker barge, uh, the cargo surveyor, they will be giving you this uh, the density. The density is always measured in the shore laboratory in a very standard atmosphere, standard uh, climates and conditions and all. And uh, using standard measuring parameters so that uniform results are always obtained. And that is the reason why the density in the lab is always in vacuum and at 15 degrees Celsius. This is very, very important. The density what we uh, what the surveyor gives us is always in vacuum and at 15 degrees Celsius. This 15 degrees part, we always uh, we already seen it. But this vacuum part, we didn't pay much attention to it so far. So we'll look at a little bit on this what, vacuum part of it. But the standard temperature is always 15 degrees Celsius. All right. So why vacuum? Because again, like I said in, this, in the point number two, the, the laboratories are all done in very standard atmosphere and standard climates and conditions. And that is why it is, it is measured in vacuum. When we measure this, when we use this formula, mass is equal to volume into density. If this density is in vacuum, the mass will be also in vacuum. That means the mass obtained, the weight of the object obtained also will be in vacuum. So, but then the problem is we don't want the, vac uh, the mass in vacuum. We want the mass in air. The ship is in the air, the cargo is in the air. I mean, the, the bill of lading figures are all uh, based on the air. The lodicator figures for, the, for your alleged reports, all those figures are all based on the, the mass in air. So we don't want the mass in vacuum. Yeah. And so we have to use another table called table 56 to convert the weight in vacuum to the weight in air. All right. Captain Anand, sir, sorry yes. for the interruption. Yes, sir. Uh, seven minutes left, sir. Seven minutes left, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yes, uh, sir. Thank you. Yeah, all right. um, so what we're discussing about is to convert from vacuum to air. The density is always, always given in vacuum and 15 degrees Celsius. Even in the examination, even if the survey does not tell you, tell you it is vacuum and 15 degrees, it's always understood that it is always in vacuum. So we don't cross question that. It's always in vacuum and 15 degrees Celsius. If I measure this density and calculate my mass, the mass will be in, air, in vacuum and not in air. What we need is the mass in uh, air and not in vacuum. So what we use is a table 56. Again, like table 54 is a separate table. What is there in the ASTM uh, booklet? And what we use, I mean, there's a table what we use to convert from weight in vacuum to weight in air. There's always a reduction factor because when we, uh, uh, we will come to the next slide, we will understand why we apply this factor. Now the uh, the air is I mean the the uh, air is surrounding this Earth's I mean the Earth's atmosphere whatever is there it's an envelope of air which is a fluid any fluid will exert what is called as buoyancy so all fluids including air also water exerts an upward thrust on all the objects inside within it and that is what is called a buoyant force or buoyancy now the approximate density of this one cubic of air is about zero point zero zero one one. So it can be uh, either uh, calculated using this table 56 or the most simplest thing what we do on uh, normally what the practice what we follow on board is whatever is the density in vacuum, we subtract 0 0.0011 and we get this, we can convert the density in vacuum to density in air. So when I, when I, when I convert this density in vacuum to density in air, the density in air when it's multiplied by the, uh, by the volume, what we get, is it mass in air or mass in vacuum? Mass in air, sir. Mass in air. So ultimately what, what we need is mass in air. So let's look at this particular, and this is normally commonly, very commonly done on board. On board, we hardly, we, we very, very rarely use this table 56. We directly just do this uh, like subtraction of whatever density is given, minus 0011 we do, and then we get our density in air, 
the density in air multiplied by the volume, standard volume, will give us the mass. All right. So now that we are doing this uh, this module, let us look at ASTM table 56. It looks like this. On the top, you see density at 15 degrees Celsius, and on the on the side over here, we get factor for converting weight in vacuum to weight in air. So we can do it by both the ways. In examination, if you wanted to use this, you can. You are free to use it. But then this is you are you are introducing one more element of uh, uh, like uh, uncertainty over here. If you pick up a wrong factor from top or from from the bottom of this table. Again, the whole thing is lost. So the easiest way is to measure by using uh, uh, the density in air by by just subtracting 0, 0, 1, 1 from the density in uh, vacuum. All right. So in given an example, density is uh, 0 0.795. So what would be the factor in table 56? So we look at this table over here on the left-hand side. It's five. Yeah, so the table uh, this thing comes in over here. So this 0 0.795 lies between these two figures. And so the number is 0 0.99865. Again, please note it down because we'll be doing one more simple example, simple corrections uh, to find out what is the mass of the oil. Okay, so let's work out this particular equation, this particular uh, numericals. Uh, some of the values are already, you already have it from your previous, uh, like uh, exa the, the examples what we did. Find the weight of the oil. If the density at 15 degrees Celsius is 0.795 and the observed temperature is 5 degrees and the observed volume is 2500. Earlier we calculated the, uh, the, the, the standard volume, GSP. Now what I want is we want the weight of the oil. So what we do is, in the first step what we do is we find out the GSP. That is the gross, gross standard volume, the volume at 15 degrees Celsius. How we go about doing it is find the VCF which you already have. And the observed volume, when you multiply these two, we get the uh, the gross standard volume GSP. That is the first step. First step is to find the GSP, the two five two three cubics. The next step is to find the weight in vacuum. The weight in vacuum can be found in two methods. We will use both the methods and see how how close they both are. First is uh, like what you call getting the uh, the weight in vacuum is we are going to multiply this GSP by the density in vacuum. So whatever value you get over here, the multiply by the density in vacuum, we get what is called as a weight in vacuum. Can we use this weight in vacuum for our calculations directly for loadicators or for bill of lading figures? No, sir. No. So what we need is we want to find out what is the weight in air. In our examples, what we have found out is the WRF is the weight reduction factor is 99865. Yeah. So what we do is again we multiply the weight in vacuum by this WRF that is. This, this figure over here, 2 points, uh, 2005 decimal 785 into the WRF, the final answer what we get is 2003 decimal 077, that is the weight in air. Clear? So the final answer is 2003 decimal 077 tons in air. Any doubts in this calculation what we did? So one more time. Okay. Uh, what we want to find out is the weight of the oil. See, ultimately, I want to know weight of the oil. Even if you go to the market to buy any vegetables, I want to buy one kg potato, one kg tomato, whatever it is. But it's all weight in air. We don't want the weight in vacuum. So what the first step, what we do is we find out the GSP. From the given values, we find out the GSP. Now, GSP means what? I have to convert the volume at the observed temperature, temperature being 5 degrees Celsius. I have to convert it to volume at 15 degrees Celsius. That is what is called the volume correction factor. Now, in our examples, what we found out is for this 5 degrees Celsius and this density of uh, 795, the VCF happens to be 1.0092. So, to find out the volume at 15 degrees Celsius, multiply these two numbers, 2500, that's the volume at observed temperature, multiply by the VCF at that observed temperature, if we, we get a figure of 2523. So, far so good? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Now, the next one is weight in vacuum. Now. We have to find out, there are two ways, like I said, two ways to reach this weight in air. So the first step is using the WRF. So next step, what we do is we find out the weight in vacuum. So weight in vacuum is what? Again, the simple uh, multiplication, that is GSV. That is what we found out at step number one. Multiply by the density. Whatever density survey is given, we directly multiply by the figure. I, we get a value of 2005 decimal 785. Now, is it in vacuum or is it in air? 
vacuum. It's in vacuum because the density what I've used is in va- is density in vacuum. That is why the answer what is is obtained is also density in uh, the weight in vacuum. Now the step three is to convert the weight in vacuum to weight in air. Now what table do we use for this? ASTM table. Which table number? Fifty six. So table fifty six we get this WRF the weight reduction factor. Again it's a simple multiplication. Weight in vacuum which is obtained over here multiplied by WRF what is obtained over here. Simple multiplication of these two gives me an uh, answer of 2003 decimal 077. And now that is a weight in air. Now you see what happens over here. The weight in vacuum is 2005. The weight in air is 2003. It's a reduction. That is why this WRF is always weight reduction factor. We never go beyond what is vacuum. Vacuum is a maximum. Because you're putting it in air, the density, I mean, the buoyancy of the air reduces the weight of that uh, the, the the object which is there in the which is in the, in the air. That is why the WRF is always called as a weight reduction factor. Whereas when we talk about the volume correction factor, I don't, I don't, we don't call it as volume reduction factor because it can be reducing, it can be expanding. Like in this case, it has expanded the volume. In the cases where we go more than fifteen degrees, it will reduce the volume. Whereas the the weight reduction factor is always, always less than one. So don't ever make a mistake of putting the WRF more than one. It will never be more than one. Yeah, it will always be less than one. So finally, when you do an answer, when you find out the answer, just do a mental comparison between these two as a volume reduced. If the volume is reduced, more or less, your, your, your steps are correct. That means your principally you are correct. The numbers may be changed here and there, but then uh, that's, that's a different story. But at least principally, you are correct. So like I said, we can also do the same example without using table 56. How do we do that? How do I get the, vol- uh, the density of the, the liquid? This step is still the same. We find out the density, uh, the, the gross standard volume. This, this step remains the same. Now for second step is we find out, the, then instead of finding out the, the weight in vacuum, what we find out is what is the density in air? That is the density in vacuum minus 0.0011. What is the density in, vac- uh, density in vacuum given by the survey? 0.795. So, a very quick calculation now. Seven zero point seven nine five minus zero point zero zero one one. What answer do I get? Seven nine three nine. Zero point seven nine. Seven nine five zero minus zero zero one one. Okay, decimal zero zero one one. That is seven nine three nine tons per cubic in air. Now we already have uh, density in air, is it not? The volume is already there available to us. Now, if it's simple multiplication of these two, what we get is weight in air. So GSV into density in air, these two numbers, simple multiplication, what we have is 2003 decimal 010 tons in air. Which step is easier? This step or the one what we did before? Second one. This one. Sir. one. So this in examination also, on board real life also, please use the second method. It is also more or less correct. You see the numbers are more or less matching. 2003 decimal 010 using this 0, uh, 0011, whereas 2003 decimal 0, uh, 077 using the the table 56. So yes, you should know how the table 56 is used, but in the, if, if possible, try to use the shorter method. Understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Any doubts in this calculations? I've used a very simple calculations. There is no complexities involved at all. So that you all understand the basic concepts of how do we convert from one unit to the other unit, and how do we go about doing this ECF and WCF. Any doubts in these calculations? No, sir. Density in oh, vacuum, sorry. how do we get that, sir? The, uh, the density is vacuum is given by the surveyor. It is given by the surveyor. It is given by the cargo uh, rep. It is given in the, uh, in the in the bill of lading also sometimes. Uh, in the BDN, uh, if you are taking bunkers in the BDN, what, whatever. The density, if the surveyor is giving you any density, that, uh, that uh, the density is always in density at 15 degrees Celsius and in vacuum. Unless it gives you what is something else called a specific gravity and all that is different. API specific gravity, we're not talking about that because there's all beyond the MMD examination. In the MMD examination, normally they don't ask you for this uh, APIs and all. So if it's given density at 15 degrees Celsius, it is assumed it is at it is in vacuum always. Even though it is not specified over here, it is assumed that it is in vacuum only. Yes? Sir, I have a doubt. Yes, yes, please go ahead. Sir, uh, like... I have never seen anyone using this uh, table 56 for bunker calculations. Yes. Can you, can you tell me the reason, sir? Is it because of the small? It is not because, because of small, because in your Excel sheet or in the calculation, you already take into account see density in vacuum minus 0011 
I already get density in air. Yes, sir. So that is the reason why we we have, even not only for bunker also, even for your normal oil tanker calculations. Of course, the oil sheet it will be written very nicely over there uh, using table fifty six and all. But we don't go uh, go by that uh, like what you call calculation of table fifty six. If your if your company has got that automatic uh, table fifty six in, incorporated into the into that uh, in the Excel sheet, that's fine. Whereas for normal calculations, we don't even bother looking into table fifty six. Why? Because this also zero zero one one also gives you more or less accurate answer. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir. Okay. So that is why we have used only we got this answer using only ASTM table fifty four, no fifty six. Clear. Now let's let's come. Uh, just give me another five more minutes because uh, now that we have we have reached this stage, I don't want to stop it at uh, this stage over here. Let's do a very simple calculation. This is towards like uh, last calculations for the day. Now this is my query. Now we are going a little one step more complex, more advanced. We are going to talk about calculations on a cuboidal tank. The weight of the oil. We have to find out the weight of the oil. Now weight of the oil is in what in vacuum or in air? In air. In air. air. So yeah. again, weight of the oil. If nothing else is given over here, it is understood that we have to do it in in uh, air only. Okay, please take down these numbers, these values. Density at fifteen degrees Celsius is given seven eight five. The observed temperature of the oil is twenty seven point five. Allage of the oil is also given. The tank dimensions are given. Now, for your ease, I am also giving you table fifty four. The time starts now. Find out the weight of the oil in air. In the meantime, let me see if anything is coming. Anybody calculating? Yes, sir. And for all these calculations, please draw a small figure that helps a lot. You will you will realize as to what is uh, what is really happening. If you put a small like a figure like this, and put the values inside, you will never make a mistake in these calculations. Anybody got the first uh, step? That is the volume of the oil. Yes, sir. Four eight nine one one zero nine five. Okay, these figures are correct. We got right, uh, height is twelve point five. The allage is subtracted. That means the height of the oil is eleven. So volume of the oil is eleven into fifteen into thirty. Four nine five zero. Yes. Four nine five zero. Cubic. Volume is very simple. This is what we did in the second, uh, like uh, six hundred, seven hundred uh, classes and all. So please don't make a mistake in finding out the volume. I can still understand if you make a mistake in table fifty four, did some even that is also not pardonable, but still that is understandable. But then please, for heaven's sake, don't make a mistake on these volumes. It's a very very simple uh, calculation. Okay, now that we have the volume of the oil, this is at what temperature? This is at twenty seven point five. Twenty seven point five. That we means this is not. 15. 15 degrees Celsius. That this 27.5 volume is not good enough for me. So I have to get it to 15 degrees Celsius. So what table will I use for uh, uh, for, fi for finding all this correction factor? 54. 54. Table 54. So let's look at table 54. 27.5. Go across. Uh, density is uh, 785. So 785. We come to a figure where these two match. What is the figure? Zero point nine eight nine eight eight one nine eight eight one. That means now we have the volume also. Now we have the figure nine eight eight one also. We have the density in vacuum. Using the same calculator in just single step, we can find out what is the weight in weight in air. Of course, in examination it rules step by step. But what I'm saying is that in a single method, we can find out what is the end result. Three eight three four point one three. Okay, so what we have is from the previous page, TOV is four nine five zero, BCF is nine eight eight one. Find GSV. 
that is multiply these two 9881 multiplied by 4950 4891 is the volume at 15 degrees celsius is my calculation correct yes, yes sir. sir okay not bad so next is uh, step number 2 what is finding out the density in air as you all uh, already agree with me density in vacuum minus 0011 is a more simpler is an approved method so don't worry about it it's an approved method in the examination also so directly we can find out what is the density in air what is the density in air now 0.7839 correct so not bad my calculation is correct now the last step is to find the weight in air we have the density in air multiplied by the the volume the standard volume so what we get is the weight in air so 3834 129 again look back the temperature is 27 degrees more than 15 the volume is 4950 so when i come to 15 degrees what happens to the volume will it expand or will it contract volume reduces volume reduces has a volume reduced over here 4950 to 4891 yes sir yes great that means this step is at least principally it is correct now the the next one is uh, 4891 that is a volume the density is uh, less than 1 that means if i multiply by this factor the, the the weight will be much lesser than this this value which is here that is 3834 decimal 129 okay so that is the final answer that is 3839 decimal 129 that is the weight in that's your answer for this question that is weight of the oil is 3834 decimal 129 Now, if you have a small element of doubt, why don't we try out this table fifty-six and see what answers do we get? So here is table fifty-six. The step number one remains the same. GSV it remains the same. Only the step number two and three uh, changes. So what is the uh, what is the W uh, the weight reduction factor for this more this density of oil seven eight five? Zero point nine nine eight five five. Nine nine eight five five. Oh, I think I made a mistake over here. Okay, so my answer will not be very. But then even the 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 factors are not so very great. That means there won't be an appreciable number. I think this red has come down a little bit. So let us see. From the previous page, there is no change in this calculation. Four eight nine one decimal zero nine five. Whatever we did for calculating the GSP is still the same. Now we 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 go in a different path. We find out the weight in vacuum. What is the weight in vacuum? Weight in vacuum is directly multiplying this divided multiply by this seven eight five. That is three eight three nine decimal five one zero. Step number three is uh, this factor is wrong by that uh, in the in the in the in the fourth digit it is wrong. But let us see it won't make a big uh, world of a difference. But let's just have a look at it. So weight in vacuum is uh, the the uh, the weight in vacuum multiplied by W R F will give us the weight in air. That is weight in air is three eight three four decimal. Three to six. There could be some changes in this decimal over here because my factor was was wrong in the fourth decimal. Now what we got from the previous method was three eight three four decimal one two nine. You see the answer is more or less very very close, and this much of approximation, this much of uh, like what you call uh, thing is acceptable for our examination. Is it clear? So even if you use it by table fifty six or you use it by without using table fifty six, the answers are are acceptable in both the cases. Is it clear? I saw in the chat there was one question from somebody. Why does the surveyor give us the, the density in zero point seven eight five? This is like uh, the, the, the density in vacuum, not in air. But then see now, life can't be that simple. This is a small amount of uh, like what you call work. What we have to do, and as I said before, also all what what the surveyor gets is from laboratory. Laboratory is from a standard temperature and standard like what you call uh, in, a, in a very ideal condition. The moment it gives us a, the the, uh, the the density in uh, air, I mean, uh, then we have to start talking about how much, what is the pressure of the air, what is this, what is that, how much was this, how much of that, and all. So that builds into a lot of complications. So survey will not get into all these things. It will just give us a density in, in vacuum, which can be easily converted into density in air by us. So it's not a big uh, big deal at all. 